Hi class, welcome to week one, welcome to DQ1. So for this DQ, we are going to be working on an Excel sheet, just like most of our DQs moving forward. There are a couple that are written responses, but majority of our DQs will be completing Excel sheets. For this DQ, this is the only DQ where the sheet will actually be attached to the LoudCloud DQ instructions. For the rest of the DQs, the templates will be attached to my extra help and instruction post, that very first post in the forum. Okay, so let's go over the general requirements that I'm going to expect from you with Excel. So in Excel, you are required to work on the templates we provide through LoudCloud. You are not allowed to get templates anywhere else. The only other place you could get them is through our Alex system, and that is where I do get the DQ templates. I do modify some of the DQ templates, so it is best to get them from my extra help and instructions in LoudCloud. Major assignment Excel templates, those will all be provided in LoudCloud, and you must use the ones provided in LoudCloud through the path. I will post major assignment resources and I will tell you how to get to those assignments when we get to that point. When we use Excel, you are required to use the desktop version of Excel. Um, I believe it's Office 365. Uh, GCU does provide this for free to you as long as you are a student. And I have posted that link in my extra help and instructions. So you can use that if you don't currently have the desktop version of Excel. You will need that desktop version of Excel when we get to the major assignments, so it's good to download it now, practice using it with your DQs. All right, the other thing to note about Excel is that we do try to follow this color code. It's not always consistent on DQs, but it is extremely consistent on major assignments. So this is our legend. So when you're working in Excel, we expect three things from you. You type a word into the cell, that's a blue cell. Um, that could be a word, it could be a letter, so it could be a variable. In the green cell, you're going to type out a number. In the gold cell, you're going to enter an Excel formula. I will post a second video that goes through how to do Excel formulas. In general, with that gold cell, it must start with an equal sign. So in this first problem, this is our example, you can see the color coding here. The blue cells all contain our variables, so those would be our text responses. The green cells, they all contain numbers. We got one currency, a percentage, um, two string numbers, and then our gold cell here. It is displaying a number, but if you look up in this white formula bar up here, it is actually a formula entered into that cell. So that is a little tricky there. It does display a number, but it is a formula entered in there. You know it's a formula because it starts with that equal sign. Okay, so when you go to complete your actual DQ, you're gonna download the template, you're gonna open it in that proper desktop Excel, and you're gonna fill in all of the blank colored cells. You're not really ever gonna type in a white cell, all the cells you're expected to fill in will be colored. I will always post a video with my DQ, so you can always watch that video and it will either go over an example or it will walk you through that entire DQ. So make sure you are um, taking time to watch those. They are very helpful. Okay, so for this specific DQ, what are we expecting you to do? All right, we have four problems on this DQ. We are expecting you to do three. That first one is an example, and I will post a second video with that example in it, how to go through that example. So the first example, we'll go through our compound interest formula. This formula is used whenever we are investing a fixed amount into an account, and we're gonna let it sit there for a while. So for example, you invested $4,000 into a saving account, it had a percentage of interest, and you didn't touch it for 10 years. After 10 years, you took out all your money, you would have interest along with the initial investment. The second problem you do will future value of periodic payments. So this problem will go through um, a savings account where you are constantly um, contributing money monthly. So we have two types of formulas for savings. Actually, we're going to have more than two, but right now, the two types of formulas we have for savings are investing a fixed amount, that's our compound interest formula, future value periodic payments formula, that's investing a uh, amount constantly throughout the loan, typically monthly. The other one we have is a loan payment formula. The loan payment formula will walk you through, you took out a loan, it's gonna have this much interest on it. How much do you need to pay monthly to pay off your loan after a certain amount of time? 
So let's say you took out a loan for $10,000 with the loan itself and interest, you have to pay back 15,000 and then you break up that 15,000 amongst the different years. So that's what that will do for you. And then the last one is the inflation rate formula. So the inflation rate will have you look at two different CPI values and it'll calculate their inflation rate. Inflation rate is kind of how our money grows or decays. Inflation rate formula is very similar to a percent increase or decrease formula. And we will see all of these formulas again, over and over and over again. We'll see them in Alex and we see them throughout our DQs. Okay, so how do we actually do each problem? Okay, so for each problem, what you're going to do is you can first start by reading about the formula. This is going to be your gray cell that's above the sample problem. So for this one, it starts with if an initial amount P grows, that is gonna kind of give you an interpretation of the formula. To the left of that, you will give you, they will give you the appropriate formula you're needed. The way the formula works is that when you type in your Excel formula, you will start with the equal sign and you'll follow it to the right. So here, our formula we'd follow is that equals P times parenthesis one plus R over N to the N times T. All right, once you find your formula, you're gonna to wanna to list out all your variables. List out all the variables that are on the right-hand side of that equal sign in that first row, and then list out what's on that left-hand side of the equal sign, that A of T, list that out next to your gold cell. And then after you've listed out all the variables in that equation, go to your sample problem, decipher your sample problem. When you decipher that sample problem, you should be pairing the numbers with their variables. P stands for principal amount, that's your starting amount. R stands for rate, that's your percentage. N is the number of compoundings per year. So if you see compounded quarterly, that's four. If you see compounded each month or you're putting in money each month, that's 12. T is the time. Okay, so line up all your variables, line up all your values, and then in your gold cell, start with that equal sign and follow your formula. This is the same thing you'll do for each problem. Each problem is gonna have its own sample problem, its own formula to follow. Own sample problem, own formula. Notice how each formula is different, so make sure you are using a new formula each time. And then you'll only be given the needed blue and green cells for that problem. So with the inflation rate formula, you will notice that you're only given two blue cells, two green cells, and then one blue cell by that gold. So that means we're going to have three variables total. We have that inflation rate, new CPI, old CPI. Once you have finished a problem or finished your entire sheet, um, it doesn't matter if you do this after each problem or after the entire sheet, you are gonna wanna go through and you are gonna wanna check your formatting. Formatting is the way the cell appears. So when we format cells in this class, we have um, three formatting things we'd switch between, currency, percentages, and numbers. When you are working on your problem, you'll see the format instructions kind of sitting next to your gold cell. So here they'll tell us format dollar amounts as currency with two decimal places, format rate as percentage with one decimal place, format periods, years, that's our N and our T values as numbers with zero decimal places. And that will stay consistent throughout the problems. The only one that's different is the very last one, that inflation rate one for that one, format CPI values as numbers with three decimal places, format inflation rates as percentages with three decimal places. I will also post a video on formatting itself. So if you don't know how to format cells, I'll post a video that's specifically on just how to format cells and what I mean by formatting cells. Okay, so this is an overall summary of what to do with this sheet. I will post two follow-up videos. One video will go through the first example and it'll explain how to use Excel formulas. The second video will go through formatting. What you're responsible to do is fill in these three blank problems, send in your sheet to that DQ forum, and then watch for my feedback.